Hi everybody, I'm Maggie from the Nathan Public Library and we are going to be doing something new. So um, again, today we're going to be talking about fiction, books, and inspirational fiction. So if I mention a book today, um, or Facebook Live, and if you're watching it later too, you'll read comments. But if you read a book that I have read and you want to say something, feel free to leave a comment. Um, engage with other people who might be viewing this video. And one of the coolest things that we're going to be able to do with this format is going to be, if I hold up a book and you really like it, um, you can leave a comment, hey, put me on hold for this title, and we'll go back through and we'll fill holds and you'll be able to pick up these books here at the Napoli Public Library um, with your targets in this system and we'll get these books into the hands of you, our community. Um, as I mentioned, the library is open, so there might be people walking by, the phones might ring, um, but we're here, we're here to serve you, and we hope that you can find something to read this summer. So without much further ado, I'm going to kind of go over some titles. Um, again, if you see a book that you really like, leave a comment, leave a message, call us on the phone, um, log on to your account on our um, online catalog on our website, and place holds, and we'll get these books into the hands of the people. Okay, this is the first book I'd like to talk about. This is Catherine Center's How to Walk Away. It is not her newest title. She's actually written a couple different books. This one was recommended to me by a co-worker named Pat. Many of you guys know um, Miss Pat. How to Walk Away features, um, it starts with a romance. So um, our protagonist, she is deathly afraid of heights. And her um, very special significant other is bound and determined that he is going to get her up in an airplane and in the first couple of chapters gets her up in an airplane with the intent to help her curb her fear of heights and flying and he's going to propose to her in the airplane but what nobody expects is that that plane crashes and she loses um, functioning of her legs and becomes um, paralyzed and so this is the journey of what happens when she has to learn to walk away from a relationship that has been toxic and the feeling that takes place in this story. So this is How to Walk Away as Catherine Center. Um, in this story, if you enjoy reading it, Catherine's second book, um, Things You Save in the Fire, or something to that degree. Um, it's a blue cover, and it actually features one of the firefighters that is in this title. So they're completely standalone, totally different books, but there is a tie-in that's there for those readers who enjoy to read um, books by the same author over and over. We're having a little trouble hearing, so you might want to talk, talk oh, louder. Yeah, talk okay. louder. Um, this title here, this is Christy Miller, and I wondered whether or not I should include it in this week, so you might find it in another week too, because Christy Miller is an inspirational fiction character written by one of my favorite authors, Robin Jones Dunn. And the reason I question putting it this week in our fiction and inspirational fiction week is because in the first 12 books in this series, Christy and her friends are actually in high school. So I might mention this one again when we get to the week where we're talking about our team titles. And um, so you'll hear that one in repetition. But I devoured this book many years ago. It's um, older series. Um, Robin started writing Christy Miller and her friends in the late 80s, early 90s, and is still writing books about these characters today. So again, she's 14, turns 15 in the very first title. It follows 12 books through her high school years, follows her to college as um, a young woman as she gets married, and in the newest titles, um, and series, which is in Paracles, which came out last year, Becoming Us is the first one in the next series. Christy is a young 30-year-old mother, married, and she's dealing with the challenges of, you know, making friends as an adult, and what that looks like when the people that you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis are more proximity friends than friends that you are invested in. And this story, it just, you, you get so involved and invested in the characters 
and you get to know them in your wit. And there's an ongoing joke with me and my friends that you start to feel after 30 books of reading about Christy and Katie and Sierra and all the characters in these titles, they become so ingrained in you that when you're walking on the street, you feel like you see them. The person that you've developed in your head is that character. You see them and you're like, that person really does exist. Or you think, what would Christy do? What would Sierra do? Oh, you know, kind of would think that is so funny. So these books, multiple series, the same author, and the characters run throughout. So if you're a fan of, um, like about two series, by Karen Kingsbury, this would be another series where there's multiple sets, multiple genres, and the characters just cross back and forth, and the storyline keeps going on. So in the beginning book, she's 15, um, just turns 15, and again, she's in her early 30s in the newest sets. And the second book in the Haven Maker series just came out at the end of April, um, and we hope to get that here in the library soon. So these are great titles. I do read all genres um, because I love to have um, amazing conversations with the people that visit this library. So while I like inspirational fiction, I also like to read romance novels. This is one that was recommended to me by a friend back in February. She said, you have to read Baker so much to the point that she wanted me to fly home and take this book with her and mail it back when I was done with it. And I waited and waited until our library got it, finally got my hands on. Baker, and this one by Sarah Smith is an open door romance, which means it's going to um, give descriptive scenes versus a closed door romance where um, the characters might walk away, close the door, and you know that intimacy takes place, but it's not descriptive. So there are differences in your romance titles. This one is open door, but is a fun enemies to lovers story that takes place in a workplace and. They have, um, they, they start a relationship and it's the character development that takes place between these two characters. It's so funny. I literally laugh out loud reading this book and some of the fun that the characters got into. Um, I think that you really enjoy this title if you like rom -coms. My aunt recommended this book to me, and I had heard about it over and over again. Um, Before We Were Yours is a fiction um, title. However, the part that really looks at you is it is based on true historical events. So if you have read any of Lisa Wingate's titles, you know that she can read and write amazing stories, great characters, but when you know that a character has gone through some of the things that have happened in this title, it gets you to the point where I had to walk away from before we were yours and be seen three or four times. So in this story, it takes place um, back in the um, Tennessee Children's Home Society is um, prevalent, is operational, and Georgia Pan has not come under any scrutiny, has not been investigated like she was. Um, so if you were around when the Tennessee Southern Home Society was um, national news and the story broke and criminal charges took place against this, it won't be um, far out in the left field for you. So this historical account um, kind of talks about how these children were taken from their homes, taken from their front yards and sold through adoption through this children's agency to families that they thought were more um, deserving of having children and they couldn't have children of their own. Again, this is a gripper. It will make you think. And because of this story and the popularity that it um, had on readers everywhere, People who actually lived through the true story of the Georgia um, Children Home Society started writing letters to Lisa, the author of this book. And um, earlier this last year, she ended up gathering all of those stories and she um, wrote a nonfiction title that included real stories of real people and children who were raised in the children's home and then were adopted by families that were not their own. Um, so this one has a great tie-in, but I definitely recommend Before We Were Yours as your first read and then follow it up with the non-fiction title um, Before and After is the name of that one. 
Uh, this next title here is The Little Old Woman Who Broke All the Rules. It is part of a series of older characters who live in a nursing home. And it's not an American nursing home, but overseas. So if, um, I'm trying to remember where they live. Do you remember my time? Uh, I don't think I've read that one. I've, I've wanted to read it, but I haven't gotten to it yet. So, I want to say like Sweden, but I could be wrong. Maybe just someplace in Europe. I really don't remember. I think it is a book in translation, too. Um, but in this story, it is about a whole bunch of pensioners, um, retired people that live in a nursing home or um, in a care home. And the people who are in charge of the home have kind of let things fall. They don't keep up the place like they would wish. They don't give the um, people things to do. They just put them in front of the TV and expect them to be rational and sit there. And these people are, you know, retired school teachers and retired woodworkers and plumbers, and they do best when they're busy. And in this story, they decide that it would actually be better to be in a prison than to be in this assisted care um, facility. So, oh my gosh, I, I laughed so hard to do this bit. So, because when you're in a prison, you get time outside. They didn't get that in the nursing home. There wasn't enough staff to let them um, take walks and be outside. Um, in a prison, you get bed back three meals a day. That didn't always happen in the nursing home. Um, just things to keep them occupied. So they start escaping from their nursing home and they go on a crime spree and they try to break all these little petty crimes um, in the hopes that they can get arrested and sent to jail so that they have better care um, in the prison than what they have in the nursing home. So this Again, hilarious, hilarious book. Um, I hope that you would read it. I have not read the entire series, but I bet it's probably just as good as the little old lady who broke all the rules. Um, many of our readers here in the Napoli Public Library are fans of um, major book clubs. So, Oprah Winfrey's Book Club, Reese Witherspoon's Color Sunshine Book Club, um, Goodness, Jenna Bush has her own. Uh, what are some other ones? I can't think. There's so many different ones. But um, this one, The Giver of the Stars, was a very, very popular book on Hello Sunshine, the Citizen Footwood. And it is written by uh, the author of Only Made in the Movie. Me Before You. Yes, Me Before You. So, this is Jojo Moyes, who writes The Giver of the Stars. This is a historical fiction account of a half horse librarian in the um, hills of Kentucky. And this book, I think it's won lots of awards, um, and it's even on the New York Times bestseller list. This, again, is a um, historical account, um, fictional account of the pack for fellow librarians and what it took to get books into the hands of the people um, when libraries were not available in every community like they are now and how lucky we are. Um, this story uh, features four, four women who are running the library and it's the day to day what happens to them but then there's also an ongoing storyline throughout. So I don't want to ruin it for you. But if you were intrigued at all by the giver of the stars, um, just make sure you place a hold to leave a comment so we know that you want this title and we will get it into your hands. If you have read this book and you really enjoyed this storyline, my next title might be one that you would be interested in. Kim Michelle Richardson wrote The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek. Again, the same storyline. It's about a pack horse librarian and the value that books can bring to a community and to the residents that live there. Um, in this one, the twist is that um, Hussey, who is our protagonist, she is actually a blue person. So, um, if you, I'm trying to think, I feel like it was the Today Show, 
and they interviewed the gentleman who was the last of the blue people of Kentucky. Um, kind of have a blue um, tint to your skin, and it's, it's a heart condition um, that would give that tint to your skin. But in the Book of of Troublesome Fruit, because she is not white, Pussy deals with the same repercussions as if she was an African American person. She is considered colored in her community. And while her dad wants nothing more than for her to find love, to get married, um, the difficulties in being considered a colored person um, in the time that this book takes place is a huge underlying um, storyline in this book. And then in the end, she does find love, and then the community decides that that's an interracial relationship because she is considered colored and they try to tear this relationship apart. Um, but it even goes so far as Pussy um, seeing a doctor and trying to find out what's wrong with her. So um, again, this is about a task force librarian. The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek um, takes you to in another great title. Uh, let's do another round town. Would Like to Meet is by uh, Rachel Winters. This is a story of two single, um, two single people who are, you know, trying to find love and the girl has expectations of what she thinks she's going to have. And, and Evie has, this could be an enemy to lover, so somebody who she picks at all the time that she sees in a coffee shop um, quite frequently um, is the dad of a hard of hearing child, which I found um, a lot of interest in. I love to read books about characters. Um, who overcome and show wit and humor in what they do. And um, in this story, Evie, you know, and um, I can't remember his name, and Ezra. There you go. They get um, thrust into this partnership where they have to write a screenplay. So Would Like to Meet is another romantic comedy. Um, there is kind of a theme that you'll see here with our our rom-coms, you've noticed that a lot of these illustrated covers, um, they get checked out a lot. So you'll find these throughout our library collection. Um, and if you like a good romantic comedy movie, these books will be for you. Um, the Late Bloomers Club, this one would be the second book by Louise Miller. The first one is about the City Baker's Guide to Country Living. So it uh, takes place in a coffee shop that has been owned by the same family for years and years. And um, this story is with me. So much like my friend, you know, I talk about my book characters, Christy Miller, how I get so invested in the characters, this book is less than 300 pages. No, just over 300 pages. 320 pages. And I became so invested in these characters that I laughed out loud, that I cried, that I started recommending it before I even finished, which is a huge tell for me. Um, this one was, it gripped me. So definitely one of my favorites. It is a romance, but it's not in your face romance. It's more about the community that you live in and finding family with the people that you're around and trusting in them and, you know, going through that journey of finding hope and a place um, in your community. So that's the Late Bloomers Club by Louise Miller. Okay, so this uh, next title is by Sarah Miller. Caroline is the mother of... Um, Mary and Laura and Carrie and Baby Grace. Um, if you are familiar at all with the um, Little House on the Prairie series, this title is written from Caroline's standpoint. So as a young wife and um, previous school teacher, what it is like to be a mother, um, you know, going west and to have an account not from a child's perspective, like you would from the Little House in the Prairie series. Caroline, she just, 
she totally put a different spin on writing from this standpoint. The way that you see things through Laura's eyes and the way that you see things through, um, through Caroline and her relationship with Charles and being a mother and giving birth um, with nobody else around you and not having those female friendships and that empowerment. Um, this one was great and I think that you would really, really enjoy this title by Sarah Miller. If you enjoyed um, Little House on the Prairie, um, this would be a good one to try. Sarah Miller has also written lots of other titles. She'll be on my nonfiction week where I read um, and share some of the titles that she has written in nonfiction format as well. So along with this um, kind of storyline, Caroline is not a new character, but somebody that you're familiar with, but this would be a whole new spin. This one here is going to be kind of the same. So Finding Dorothy is actually um, written from the standpoint of Frank L. Baum. That would be the author of, um, I can think of his Oz. Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. <laughs> the author of Wizard of Oz. And um, this story is written from the standpoint of the author's wife. So Frank did not, she, he was not destined to be a storyteller. He, goodness, he was a toy maker. He was um, just a merchant and he did lots of different things in his life. And it was once everything was kind of ripped away from him that he discovered his joy in writing books. And then he ended up, ended up writing um, the, the Wizard of Oz series. And that's not just one book. I think there's, the same. I think there's nine books in the Wizard of Oz um, series. And so this book by Elizabeth Letts is written from his wife's perspective. So, you know, she sees her husband fail at all these things that, um, that he's trying to, to excel in in life and as a father and how things are not working out the way that he had predetermined and destined for his life. And it takes place, it would be considered a time slip. So it goes back and forth before um, Wizard of Oz was written and then what would be considered current day in the books, which um, would have been when the Wizard of Oz was being filmed in Hollywood. So um, Frank has long since passed away and his wife, uh, I totally forgot her name, Maud, so after his passing, Maud has the script and finds out that the script has been sold to Hollywood. And so present day Hollywood, she goes on set and is becomes a like a character helper in helping develop um, the characters so that they portray themselves correctly in the movie. Um, and the producers who don't treat the actors well and calling them out on the discrepancies and there's a small mystery involved where um, different storylines come together and they're twisted but the chapters go back and forth between what would be considered current day Hollywood as the film is um, being filmed and as Frank is writing the story. So Finding Dorothy is a really, really great, great read for um, anybody who is a fan of Judy Garland. Um, she is mentioned in this. This is listed in our week um, as a fiction title because it is historical fiction. So lots of tips are put into it, but the book itself is fictionalized based on all the historical things that they can find and then they filled in the gaps. So there is a um, whole little excerpt in the back talking about where they found different information and how they put it all together. And it just, all the details make this one an excellent read for me. So Finding Dorothy and by Elizabeth Letts. Um, I mentioned back when I first started filming this um, video, um, how I like to read cross format. Um, this book here, We Are Called to Rise, is one that I picked up because of the cover here in the library. I think I renewed it two times before I finally was like, you know what, I'm not gonna get to this. 
And then I saw it on um, Overdrive. This is before Libby came around, so a couple years ago. And so I checked it out as an audiobook. And it is written from uh, multiple perspectives, um, several different viewpoints that come together and they wrap to have the storyline all intertwined at the back of the story at the end. So if you're a fan of Liam um, Moriarty, um, that would be like Little Big Lies, um, What Alice Forgot, some of these other titles that she's written, this would be written in that same format. So it takes place in um, Las Vegas, and the characters are all very different, um, different genders, different ages, and they come together um, to tell an amazing story that even now I can think back on the feelings as I was reading and listening to this book. It was around Christmas time, and I distinctly remember being in Sam's Club with my earbuds in and tears lying down my face. I just bawled like a baby reading this book and how the storyline all comes together. Um, current events would um, definitely make this one a book that could be um, a trigger warning for some readers that have some invested feelings towards things that are happening currently and things that you're seeing in our world today and you'll find um, a lot of solstice and we are called to rise by Laura McBride. Uh, a couple of months ago this one um, came across my desk recommended by a friend who knew that I was looking for a story um, that was a little bit longer beyond the point is one that I probably would not have picked up had it not been recommended to me. Um, I try to stay away personally from books that have a lot of military storylines just because a person would trigger warning to myself. I, I struggle to wrap my head around um, titles and storylines that aren't overly fictionized, fictionalized for myself. So you know totally up to you what you think about that but this one again was not book a book that i would have picked up for myself but i am so thankful in hindsight that i had read it so this is about a group of women three women who meet at west point academy and the storyline alternates back and forth between the different characters it starts when they're in high school and how they got to west point um, if it was to play basketball or um, if it was because their ancestors went there. And it weaves in and out of how these girls became steadfast friends and then even as they entered middle age um, and the dynamics of their lives changed and they moved and they've gone through health scares and having families and then maybe having their families taken apart um, Beyond the Point is a book where your character-driven perspectives made this book one that will, again, stick with me a very long time. Um, this book is by Claire Gibson, and Beyond the Point is available. Just tell me if you'd like it, and we can get this one in the hands of you guys. I second Maggie's recommendation. It was amazing. So. Um, here's another illustrated romantic comedy. This one is a closed door romance. So if you don't want books with descriptive um, relationship scenes, this would be one that you would enjoy. Um, Waiting for Tom Hanks has lots of innuendos and in, um, what do you call like those hidden tidbits? Like there's a like few, pop culture. Yes, pop, pop culture, culture references. That's the perfect way of describing it. Um, so this one is so, so funny. It made me laugh. You never know what you have until it's right in front of you. And sometimes it takes somebody else to point out what you have in front of you. So in our story, Annie, she is a huge romantic comedy fan. And she has put some of those character wants into her wish list um, for what she wants in a relationship herself. And she set the bar awfully, awfully high. So um, just re-watching Sleepless in Seattle over and over again and some of these other characters, it makes for a great story. 
Um, it does any kind of quick. You wish that it would kind of be drawn out a little bit more because you're, again, invested in the characters and the humor of this story. Um, but if you enjoy rom-coms, but you don't want a lot of um, details and romantic scenes, this would be a good one for you. This is Carrie Winfrey's Waiting for Tom Hanks. And the second book is called um, Not Like the Movies, and it comes out later this year. Oh, I have it in my queue. Okay. okay, so we'll have to check back with Martha and see if the second one holds up as well as the first one. Um, let's see, another inspirational fiction author that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy is Rachel Houck. She has written oodles and oodles of books. Um, oftentimes she'll read, um, write books, a lot of her standalone specifically, she'll write um, time slips, so like a historical perspective, and then she would will read like a, excuse me, write like a current day narrative, and then she intertwines them. This one is not like that. This book series, Once Upon a Prince, um, all takes place in South Carolina, right? Yeah. That takes place in South Carolina. South Carolina. Um, but it is the first book in a whole series about Samantha Truitt and um, how she falls in love with a prince that she doesn't realize is a prince. Um, the faith that she has and her family has um, after a failed relationship um, take this book to a whole other level and you, um, you fall in love with them. So if you are fans of, what is that book that, or that movie that Julia Stiles was in? Um, um, Once Upon a Prince? Mm -hmm. Well, prince. It, has, it has Prince in the title. Mm -hmm. Okay guys, can you may tell us what the title is? You know, like she goes to college, she falls in love with a prince and... The Prince in me? The Prince in me! Is that yeah, right? It's not I, The Prince of Cyrus. No, I think it's it The Prince in me. me. Okay, so this one kind of takes along that she falls in love with Nathaniel, doesn't realize he's a prince who is just on vacation away from Brighton. Right, is that what he's a prince of? I think so. They, they also made this book into a Hallmark movie. That's true. Okay, so two years ago? I think yeah. they made this one into a Hallmark movie. They have changed huge parts. Instead of it being a diner with sweet tea and the characters there, they make it into a flower shop, which the movie is great. Don't get me wrong, the books are better. Um, that's an ongoing <laughs> thing with us librarians. We like to compare the books to the movies. Um, this series, the books definitely are better. The wit comes across beautifully, and there's multiple storylines where um, sub-characters in the first book find love in um, sequential books. So this would be one if you were a fan of any type of um, royalty storylines this would be one that you would want to pick up. Okay, so many of you have probably already read A Man Called Uwe. That one has been trending for goodness, probably going on two years. Tom Hanks has been cast as the American um, version of Uwe, and that should, I don't even know when that's gonna be filmed and coming out. If you are a fan of A Man Called Uwe, this is gonna be one that you're gonna wanna pick up. Uh, another coworker, Lynette, um, Gave this one to me. Um, the Curious Charms of Arthur Pepper is a book um, about an eight-year-old man who discovers some secrets about his wife after she passes away. And it is, it's a journey of um, taking what you've known and what you've believed to be true and turning it on its head and following your heart and discovering a person the person that you love, discovering them in a new light and um, in a perspective that maybe they're, um, they're known for from other people. So maybe somebody who knew them as a child and how they interpreted that friendship or a co-worker or something like that. This story takes Arthur out of his everyday routine where he does the exact same thing every single day, year after year, wears the same colors, doesn't do anything new, doesn't travel outside of his home, and takes him on this journey that is eye-opening and it helps him fall even more in love with his wife after she is gone. So this is The Curious Charms of Arthur Pepper, and definitely 
a great book if you like A Man Called Ube, or if you couldn't connect to that one because of how it was written, this would be a good option to try and read. Okay, back to some inspirational fiction. Um, the Huckleberry Hill series is one that I read every new book that comes out. Jennifer Beckstrand writes lots and lots of titles, um, but this series in particular is about um, a great, I guess it'd be a great grandma and a great grandpa um, in the Amish community of Wisconsin, and they live um, on a, a huckleberry farm. And in each book, they have become matchmakers for their great-grandchildren. And so you can read them as standalone titles if you would like to, but um, again, you don't have to. The storyline ties all together. So if you read, um, you know, one couple's story in the first book, you might hear in a sequential book, like how they're doing, if their relationship is on the rocks, if um, they welcome the baby to their family, things like that. So you could read them in order if you wanted to, but you don't have to. The wit and the humor in this book literally has me laughing out loud. Um, the love that these great grandparents still have for one another and the way they tease each other and carry on just, it makes you want to fall in love and be in love for 70 years like, like they have. I just, the homies are, they just, they just make me laugh and I hope that you would enjoy Huckleberry Hill if you like um, Amish Christian fiction. This would be a good series to start. I think we have at least nine books in our collection. Okay, we got just a few more here to talk about. Um, every Friday or every couple of Fridays we try to do here at the library something called Book Feature Friday where um, staff members share a title of books that they have recently read or they have enjoyed and that they think that you're gonna enjoy as well. This was my first pick for that one. So this is A House Without Windows. It is a book about, there's kind of a mystery involved, but it is about a woman who is put into prison because her husband is killed. And you know that she is not the murderer, but because they cannot figure out who murdered her husband, they put her in jail. And in this story, um, it is set place in Afghanistan. I did not know this before reading the story, but because the women are in charge of the household and um, can easily, easily be accused of wrongdoing or of looking at another man or of, you know, expressing their opinion when it's not asked of them, different things. This book put me into the shoes of a different culture and totally had me reflecting on what I have in this country and how blessed that I am. Um, in this story, if you're a mother and you get put into jail, your children go to jail with you. They are raised in the prison. And so this storyline, um, it made you think. It it really gripped you. And I, goodness, I think I read this six years ago, and I still think about it. Every time that I hear about a story on the news, or this was even before Malala and, um, and how it became more public knowledge, you know, about the women and not being able to go um, to school and things like this. this. This book comes back to me often, and I recommend it often to friends and family who they need something that's serious um, that can take them outside themselves and give them some empathy um, that they might not have otherwise. So, A House Without Windows by Nadia Hashimi um, is a great, great book. If, however, you struggle to read words and dialogue that have um, maybe harder pronunciations because of the context in which it is written, this one is on Libby and Overdrive. So don't let the content be something that keeps you from reading it. We'll find you a format that works for you and maybe listening is the way to go. So A House Without Windows by Nadia Hakeem. Um, another book that um, has merits of being used as an audiobook. This one has been a huge, huge um, fan of all of the staff that work here at the library. 
Um, if you have read any of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books, um, there's a good chance that this one has been on your radar. Or maybe you have enjoyed it as well. So you can tell us in the comments if you have liked this one. Daisy, Daisy Jones and the Six is written in a completely different format than anything that I have ever experienced before. So it's written like an interview. So multiple, it's been a seven or eight. Yeah, there's like seven or eight. Yeah, seven or eight characters go back and forth. And each chapter there's like interviews and like podcasts and references to songs and flashbacks, but you feel like you're living in the rock and roll ages of the 50s and 60s, that's not right, the 60s it's and 70s, 70s. 60s and 70s, and I legit read through this entire book and thought that these were real people. I went on YouTube to try to find some of the music that is mentioned in this story, only to find out that it's fake. This is not even a real book, or it's, it's a real book, but it's, it's not even about a real band. I was floored because it felt so authentic and so real. I came to work and was like, you guys, it's not even real. And, and they all looked at me like, I can't believe you thought that it was. I felt so silly, but it felt authentic. It felt like... I was listening to, and definitely listening to this one, so this is an audiobook, you can yeah. check that out at the library, it's on, on Libby and Overdrive. I thought it was real. I think I've said that six times, do you get the point? I thought it was real! And I, I can't even wrap my head around that, but everybody that I've talked to has already read it. So maybe, maybe yeah. I can recommend it to one of you guys watching Book Bites with Maggie, and this will be something new to you. Yeah, uh, that's one of my, like, all-time favorite books, but I think I own it in every single format. In every format. Yeah. If you are a fan of podcasts, this one reads similar to, like, podcasts and articles and newspaper storylines and, oh, just anyway. Okay. Daisy Jones and the Six. And, and it is being made into a, into a TV series. What? I didn't yes. know that. It okay. is. I'm going to have to put that on my bought it and is developing it. I, I kind of forgot that. <laughs> yeah. It has the Reese Witherspoon logo on it. This was another one of her titles. I kind of heard it. Did I do just the one? Yeah, just the one. Okay, so she writes lots of great books. Um, or excuse me, recommends great books. So if you're not a fan of um, finding books on your own, every month Reese Witherspoon comes out with a great title um, with really strong female character storylines. So this, this is one of those. And here's the last one in it. <laughs> <laughs> I should have mixed these up better. Um, Where the Crawdads Sing is another New York Times bestseller. This one has been on everybody's radar for years and it took me months to get my hands on it because everybody was on hold on it. I think all of Napoli might have read this book by now. <laughs> it is very well loved and it stays open so you know this book has been read over and over and over again. This story takes place over the course of 30 years. I think, like, a long time. You know, it goes from um, childhood, oh, it seems a young adult, in the 30s. Oh, mm -hmm. um, uh, let's see, I can't remember her name. Kyra. Kaya? Kaya. So Kaya is our protagonist, and she is given a label, and we all know how dangerous it is to label anybody in um, any point in their lives, but she is deemed the marsh girl. Her family is not rich, her father is an alcoholic, and her entire family leaves, and she is left to survive on her own with her father who disappears for days and weeks and months at a time and then one day he just never comes back and she lives and thrives on her own um it's a young child and um you know never gets to go to school and once she gets to school she is mocked and decides she's never going to go back and it takes somebody else who lives, um, you know, a ways down the marsh 
to befriend her, to teach her to read, um, and Isaac gives life back to her, and she goes on to use the knowledge that she's gained of living in the marsh to, to succeed in life, and she gets to the point where she is able to go to school, she writes books, she becomes widely successful, and the overcoming part of this story is you just want to shout from the rooftops when you get to it and be like, look what she did, look what Kaya did when people were able to overcome the adversity that they are given. And if you have not read this book, but you know people that haven't, recommend it to them. It is a, it's a story, again, that sticks with you. And the characters, they, they overcome in such a magnificent way that you just root for them. And they're fictional people, fictional characters in a book. So if you know you found something good and you can't stop talking about it, when you recommend it before it even, um, you even get finished with it yourself. And so um, my goal with Book Bites is to maybe just um, entice you with some titles that you have not read yet, that you want to read. And, um, and I hope that I've done that for you today. Um, next week we're going to be talking about some children's and some middle grade titles um, but I'd love to have you guys come back and join me on Book Bites and we will be talking about those and engaging. Um, if you have claimed any of these books in the comments, I'll be going through those. Um, I'll be in contact with you and you can come in and pick those up with the Mackinac Public Library card. If you are viewing this from afar or from um, a town that we use a different library than our own, I hope you seek it out in your library collection um, and get your hands on some of these great titles. So um, I hope to see you soon. Again, the library is open for business. You're welcome to visit us um, during regular business hours and we will get you some books into your hands. All the minutes that you read this summer go towards helping us reach some amazing goals this summer to help you win some prizes. And by doing this program, this um, virtual meeting, you are considered attending a program. So you can add that to your account on um, the Beanstack app or um, through our website if that's how you are logging your program attendance and um, reading this summer. So I will see you guys next time. I thank you so much for joining and make sure you share this video with anybody that you think would enjoy any of the titles that I talked about today. Thank you.